can bring your, to you to your knees with a pinch, can I not? If I pinch you right, if I twist a finger in a certain way, I can bring you to your knees. And there would be no injury, nothing that requires healing or repair. Yet, you would have phenomenal discomfort and you would instinctively react in a fashion that forced you to submit. Is it possible that some of this is going on with our patients and clients? And if we keep looking for something massive to explain their remarkable disability, we aren't paying attention to what neuroscience has taught us about the nonlinearity of painful perception. Very, very important. You're not going to be very popular as a caregiver because all of a sudden, and even at this point, one half hour, not even a half an hour into this, you've already figured out a lot of stuff that your colleagues may reject. They may say, well, it's always, you know, hey, one of the things I can guarantee they'll say is, hey, my patients do fine. My clients love me. My clients love me. Shut up. You see? And if people think that if their clients love them, well, they must be doing a good job. Our job is much more difficult than that. When the primary complaint is pain, the treatment of pain should be primary. The primary complaint of pain, the treatment of pain should be primary. People oftentimes ignore that particular aspect of the patient's functioning and they blame their poor performance or dropping off performance on other things, but in fact, this person is not walking well in the venues I work these days at geriatric facilities. Their walking has nothing at all to do with the weakness or the malalignment or all of the other stuff other people see. It doesn't even have to do with fatigue. It has to do with the fact that if they walk too far, they start to hurt. And if you could do something about that, then, you, then everything t falls into place, and it only makes sense that it would. Well, this is an aphorism, an aphorism that I'm hoping will catch on. I, I invented this particular aphorism myself, and I'm hoping it will catch on. But of course, on any list of the things gone wrong with the patient that I see in the many evaluative forms that I'm given as I travel about these days, painful problems is at the bottom of the list. It's at the bottom of the list. All of the other things that we measure in the patient are much nearer to the top because they're objective, because they're concrete, because we can see them, we can write them down, we can measure them one way or another. Pain is never going to be like that. It's not going to become like that and try to make it that way. It's going to be far more complex than that. This is what might set you aside if you understand it. 